Okay, just waiting for the feedback to come back through, and there we go. All right, welcome brothers and sisters for another uh, online Bible study. We thank you for joining us. Uh, if you have any questions during the feed, go ahead and add ask in the comments section. I think I got a better view of the comments so I can keep a better eye on them. Uh, quick update. <clears throat> We may have to, uh, for the next couple of months, switch when we have our online Bible studies. It may no longer be on Wednesday nights. Uh, we might have to change them to probably looking like Thursday. And the reason being is I was recently elected to our local school systems, the LPC. And so uh, <clears throat> we really appreciate... Uh, your patience and support for that, but they are having their meetings on Wednesday nights. Not the best selection, but, you know, can't please everybody, I guess. So we're going to um, move on and do our best we can with that. And uh, I know Wednesday night isn't ideal, but, you know, uh, it works for us. Um, or we'll make it work, excuse me. Anyways, that being said, uh, update on Till All Have Heard, we have a plethora of Bibles. Please, guys, I have posted a couple of videos and posts through our Facebook page. If you could find those, like and share them. The more you interact, the more Facebook will spread this out. And we went from having hundreds of views uh, on Facebook for our posts to maybe 50 or 60 because people stopped liking and sharing our posts. Okay, so I, I really encourage you guys to do that. That's the best way to get the word out. Because to all I've heard is just a simple ministry where we take a Bible and ship it to whoever asks for free. Okay, and it's free of charge. We have hundred, over a hundred of them. We got more cases coming. And uh, yeah, we... <laughs> We got plenty of Bibles to work around with, and we really appreciate all the support we can with that. And so if you could just go ahead and get back on the... I think it's just one or two posts before uh, this video on our Facebook page and like and share that, we would really appreciate that support. Also, if you would like to support this ministry, if I can click the right button here, there we go. Go to our Facebook page. You should see a picture of our church and be sure it says Disciples of Christ there. And scroll down to our Tithely app right there. And you will click that and it'll take you straight to this link. Okay, now be sure uh, if you want to just support our general offering, you just fill it out as is. Okay, if you just want to give to our general ministry. If you're wanting to support a particular ministry, such as Till All Have Heard, be sure you switch that button over to the Till All Have Heard button like I just did there. And that way, I know that money goes to the Till All Have Heard ministry, and I'll set that aside. I'll let our treasurer know, and we kind of try to keep track of how much money is for the Till All Have Heard, and then, then our general fund. And that way, we can make sure that your money goes where you want it to go, and that's kind of the goal there. Um, we really appreciate all the love and support um, to all of her ministry is growing. It's kind of going a little bit crazy. Uh, the pastor who's head of it's got his hands completely full and is a little bit overwhelmed. A lot of personal issues going on. I'm not allowed to share too much right now, uh, but I will ask for prayers for him. His name is Spike Bowen. And... Uh, Got a lot on his plate right now, and uh, I pray that everything uh, that the Lord will come into his life, and, and you know, of course, he's already in his life, but the Lord take even more control of his life, and uh, really help out in a big way there because he he needs a lot of support. So if we could just uh, send some prayers out to him, we really appreciate it um, because this ministry is so simple, it's so basic, it's such a brilliant idea, and it's something he's truly passionate about, and I. I have fed off of that passion, and it's really amazing. So I really appreciate any support that we can send his way. Uh, that being said, let's move on to our lesson, shall we? Okay, so uh, Treasures in Heaven is the name of today's lesson, and we are going to be out of Matthew 
chapter 6, verse 19 through 24. Do not store yourself up treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store your for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamb of the body. <clears throat> if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light with you within you is your it in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate one or love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. All right, so let's kind of break this down. Um, in verse, uh, let's see, let's just move back. At verse 21, we get this whole, where your heart is, so, or where your treasure is, so is your heart. And Jesus has really been pushing in his ministry about your intentions. The whole Sermon on the Mount is really geared to, I mean, it's a great, great sermon on how to, uh, for us to really gear ourselves to being better people slash Christians. But if you notice the underlying, you know, like, a, you know, you go all the way back to giving your oaths, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Quit trying to add value to your oaths because that means you're worthless. That means that you don't really have control of the situation or your word is meaningless type of thing. Um, love your enemies. Uh, you know, when you commit adultery, you're not supposed to look at other people lustfully. Don't just commit adultery, but don't look at other people lust lustfully, right? Okay, and then you go back to do not kill people, do not murder, and Jesus is saying, don't even be angry. Let your anger go. Notice how Jesus' teachings keep going to the heart of the matter. He keeps going down to what the essence of the reason. Why do you commit murder nine times out of ten? It's because you're made angry at somebody. Why do you commit adultery? Because you lust over someone else. Uh, why, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, why do we sin? Why, you know, why do we struggle with prayer? Why do often some people pray? Because they're wanting to be heard, not because they truly want to communicate with God. You know, Jesus' teachings really dive into what is your intentions behind what you're doing? If you are following scripture just to get into heaven, I would argue you're probably not going to make it. Christians, we have taught hundreds, thousands, millions of people, if you believe in God, you'll go into heaven. If you believe in Jesus, you'll go to heaven. But the problem is, is that the intention behind this is to save yourself and not truly humble yourself in front of the amazing sacrifice Jesus has made for us. Our treasure, what we value, is ourselves in that particular mentality. If we think of ourselves as if I believe in Jesus Christ, I'm going to heaven. Not, hey, I believe in Jesus Christ and I love Jesus and I. the bonus is I'm going to heaven. It's I believe so I can go into heaven. If that's our mentality, our treasure is not Jesus, it's ourselves. And we probably won't make it in. I can't say 100%, but I got a pretty good idea that we're not making it in. Because our focus, the heart of why we're doing everything Jesus says to do, is to save ourselves, not because we love our neighbor, not because we love Jesus, not because we love God, but because, but because we love ourselves. And that right there, brothers and sisters, is the big reason why so many Christians are called hypocrites. That right there, brothers and sisters, is the reason why many of us, Jesus will look to us and say, Be gone from me, I never knew you. You evil doers. Okay? Uh, th that is true in so many things. <clears throat> okay, so we'll skip ahead in Matthew and go to chapter 7, verse 21. I don't have this pulled up. 
because it just kind of popped to me. Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, we will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me that on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and drive out demons and perform many miracles? And then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Jesus in that scripture is talking to these Christians where their treasure lies within themselves. They are doing these good things, and yes, they're good things, but they're doing them for their own benefit. They are not doing them because they love God, they love Jesus, or they love thy neighbor. They're doing them because they love themselves. They think that they can buy their way into heaven, so to speak. That if they do enough good things compared to their bad things, their good will cancel out their bad, and then, you know, they'll get into heaven. That's their goal. And it drives me insane because so many of us, we make this mistake. I, hear, I, I, I watch a lot of television. Well, I don't watch a lot of them, but I see a lot of television ministers do this exact thing. We're so concerned about building the kingdom about saving souls we keep i know churches that keep a tally of how many people come forward to be baptized what they don't keep a tally of is how many of those people actually come back okay we're not keeping track of how we're growing the kingdom of god through his grace okay and that's something we genuinely need to address here we're so worried about telling people, if you don't submit now, you won't make it into heaven. And yes, that, that is part of the teaching. Don't get me wrong. That's, that's, that's in here. That, that's in the Bible. But if we don't pay attention to this Sermon on the Mount thing, where Jesus keeps focusing on your intentions, the reason why you do what you do, and we don't focus on the fact that Jesus keeps saying it's about your heart. It's about your heart. It's about your heart. Adultery is about your heart. Divorce is about your heart. Giving oaths is even about your heart. Your treasures, your prayer, your fasting, your worrying, uh, your salt and the light. Do not commit murder. You know, all this. Almost the entire sermon. Almost the entire sermon. Not all of it, but most of it. It's all about what's in your heart. <coughs> Excuse me, I got worked up there and choked, got myself choked up. We have to pay attention to the intentions behind our works. If you are doing the work because you think God will judge you badly, if you don't, that's only a piece of the puzzle. Jesus knows your heart. And if you are only doing the good works, just to get into heaven. Jesus is going to look at you and say, Be gone from me, you evildoers. I never knew you. He's going to do it. He says it in the Sermon on the Mount. You go, go read chapter 7. You can read that whole section. It starts at 15. With, it's about the uh, trees and the good fruit and the bad fruit. And it goes down to verse 23. So 15 through 23. But you put this back into the sermon. And this entire sermon is all about your intentions and where your heart lies and where your love really is. Is Do you genuinely have a love for Christ? Do you love God? Are you truly humbling yourself to God and submitting to his will? Not just to get into heaven. That's the bonus. Like that, that you know, it's kind of, it's kind of like, why are you helping people? Okay. And then... All of a sudden, excuse me, it's kind of like a, I lost my analogy. It, it, it just, it was there and went, bye-bye. <laughs> oh, my brain is so scattered. But the point is, is that it's our intentions. It, 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 if we are doing this just to get into heaven, Jesus is going to slam that door in our face. It's kind of like when you go to help people. And it's only because it makes you look good. Kind of like when you go give someone a hug. They can feel when it's not genuine. 
Nine times out of ten, they can feel that you're doing it because people just expect you to hug them. You're doing it just because you think it's what you should do, and if you don't, people will think badly of you. If that's why you are following Jesus, you probably aren't going to make it in. Or you'll be cast out after Jesus sees you at the party, if you want to go back to the wedding banquet analogy. We have to focus on this, brothers and sisters, because so many of us, we, we fall short on this. Okay, we fall short. Because even I will, will catch myself preaching sometimes in my sermon. Come now, you don't want to go to heaven. You know, before it's too late, submit to God. And if I'm not careful with my teachings, people might get the wrong idea. They might get the idea that, well, if I just believe in Jesus and do what he says, I'll get to heaven. That's, that's no Submit to Jesus and accept this amazing, loving gift that God loved you so much that he sent Jesus to be sacrificed, to be betrayed, publicly humiliated, beaten, flogged, nailed to a cross, thorn shoved into his head, a spear stuck into his side, nails through his hands and feet. He did all of this for his love for you. He loved you so much that that sacrifice was so amazing, so pure, that it can cleanse you of all of your sins if you would just truly, truly submit and accept that amazing gift of love. And when you accept love, that means normally if you truly accept love, you give it back as well. And that you truly love God and love Jesus for this sacrifice. And and I have to say, brothers and sisters, so many of us, there's a lot of Christians out there. I'm not for sure if they're really sending love back to God. I'm, I'm not for sure if we're really truly loving Jesus back. We're doing this because we said Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. It means I got to do what he says just so I can get into heaven. And that's just a small tiny piece of the puzzle what it really is is i love jesus so much i'm gonna do whatever he says oh yeah and i'll i'll get to go to heaven you see the difference in that mentality it, it, it's a massive difference and the reason why i'm stressing on this so much is that we really need to focus on why we do what we do because if we don't we're gonna fall just like the pharisees did and they think just because they're following the rules and doing what God commanded them to do, they'll be okay. And Jesus is like, no, you forgot the reasoning behind the rules. Why is it that there's so many laws in Judaism protecting the wife from abuse and mistreatment from her husband? And there are. You go back and read them. A man could be stoned to death for being caught abusing his wife. That was revolutionary. Why? Because God loved women. Women were considered valuable and precious to God. <coughs> and in society at the time, did not. And so God said, fine, I'll give you some laws that you have to follow then. And so instead of truly loving their wives, a lot of men, now some men did, but a lot of them also didn't. But instead of loving their wives and cherishing their wives, they just followed the rules. And Jesus is saying, no, you're missing the point. The rules were there to guide you to love. And you're, you're missing the love part. You're just following the footsteps, but you're not paying attention to where it goes. <coughs> Ooh, I got myself worked up. I should have brought some water with me to drink today. Woohoo! The point Jesus is driving home Throughout his ministry, and especially in the Sermon on the Mount, love for God. Love for Jesus. And if you don't have those, you're just following the rules, you're no better than the Pharisees back in the day who did the same thing. 
not all the Pharisees, some of them were true to God, but I'm talking about the ones that were against Jesus and trying to put him down. Now, why is this such an important thing? If you haven't caught it yet, let me state it again. If your treasure lies in yourself or anything here on earth, you won't have treasures in heaven, meaning you don't get in. Do not build your treasures here on earth, but build them in heaven. The eye is the lamp of your body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light is within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? If your focus is on earthly possessions, earthly treasures, and not just items per se, maybe yourself, maybe getting an RV, maybe, you know, and it's not nothing wrong with having nice things. The problem is where we let them rank. How upset are you going to be if your house burns down? I know people, they'd be upset, but they might be more upset on something more sentimental. Maybe their wedding picture is being burnt up. Something along those lines. Okay, now we're getting closer to where we want our treasures to be. But again, their pictures, you still have them in memory. Uh, I know some people be very upset with their house being burnt down and cry and say, Oh, woe is me and we have nothing. And others will be like, well, this really stinks. And they'd be upset because they'd have to build again. And they're going to go through a lot of hardships. But they're going to focus on God. And they'll, they'll say, well, you know, it was just a building. And they move on and build a new one. Which one are we? Where are we building our treasures? No one can serve two masters. So if you have, if your focus is on earthly possessions, I know a lot of young men right now who are chasing earthly possessions. They they can they're consumed by it. They're they're obsessed by it. It just constantly consumes them. And I worry and pray because these are Christians or so called Christians that I know and I care for them very much. But I worry that they might end up being like these people mentioned in, in Matthew 7, verse 21, and, and through 25, or 23, excuse me, 21 through 23. I worry that they're going to be like them. They're like, well, I, I did all the right things. Yeah, but you built your treasures in a house, a boat, an RV, a car, game room, insert thing that would be nice to have but it's not really necessary for today's world again it's nothing wrong with having these items it's where you rank them it's where you rank them if you put them so high on the list that you're gonna be crying and broken hearted if you lose them Maybe you need to refocus on what's important in your life. Maybe you're not building your treasures in the kingdom of heaven like you should. Just something to think about. I know I've struggled with this in my life. And uh, sometimes still do. Sometimes I catch myself still doing it. Trying to work so hard. I really want this. And we end up with that. And so uh, actually, just recently, it, it humbled me. Ashley is now a stay-at-home mom. Mom, and uh, it humbled me because the whole time we were trying to reach this goal, I kept telling her throughout every time we sat down and talked to the budget, What are you willing to live without? And we started to realize we don't, we don't need maybe live TV, we don't need all this, we don't need this, and we kept cutting back, and cutting back, and cutting back. And we started paying off more and more and more debt. To the point that we got to where her very small paycheck from the courthouse that she got really wasn't justifying all the stress we were getting of both of us working. And it was really neat to see how we are pretty happy living off a lot less. 
And it kind of dawned on me that I may never have all these items that I would really like to have. I'm okay with that. I could probably go get one or two of them. But at the same time, like, you know, I don't, I don't want to fight that. I'd rather try to build my treasures in heaven. I want to focus more on my ministry. I want to focus more on doing stuff for the community and things of that nature. So, think about that. Go and read this scripture. Study it yourself, you know. I know this is a Bible study, but do some intense study yourself. See see what you come up with, because the, the, these the Sermon on the Mount is so in-depth. We could probably, if we had a genuine class, we could probably sit here and talk about it for a good long while. And uh, really appreciate you guys' love and support on this. A reminder to continue to pray for Pastor Spike as he's going through a lot, a lot of stuff going on right now. I'm not allowed to share it, but uh, just prayers, uh, unmentioned prayers, I guess, or unspecified prayer requests there. And uh, prayers for till all have heard. And if you don't mind, go back on Facebook, like, and share our videos like and share this this video and allow it to be spread the more you interact with the videos the more it spreads and i, I gotta stress this because we were five six hundred views and then people stopped liking and sharing you know it, it it makes a difference and it's such a simple easy thing to do to help us spread the word uh, thank you guys let's end with a prayer Heavenly Gracious Father, we thank you for allowing us to gather here today to study a little more about your word. And we probably really even didn't scratch the surface of the complexity of your teachings here, Lord. But we ask that you guide us and protect us as we try to reflect upon this teaching. Maybe go back and study it some more. We ask, Lord, for your guidance and discernment to help structure this in our lives to fit your will and your grace. I ask, Lord, you be over us as we try to do what is right for your word and your glory to be spread out into the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all, and God bless.